All right, everyone. Ashe, Ashe. And blessings, peace and blessings. Uh, we're going into ritual. We got this uh, new autumn, fall uh, Sunday, the first Sunday of the season, the fall season. And I'm doing some uh, definite deep ritual, uh, traditional ancestral ritual. So I have my all white on in the in respect of the ancestors. I have some ancestral um, talisman, if you want to put it that way. And praying here next to my outside. And I just, y'all, I just heard an owl doing a hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. I love that. That was like the perfect setting. So the ancestors have blessed me. So you want to have your uh, familiars in your rituals as well. So it's a little dark right now. Um, I'm doing sort of like what you want to say. The We have the uh, sun up, sundown rituals that we do. Uh, since we are in the last season of what we consider to be um, more so the sleep season or the in between world season and it's a, a situation where we do a lot of ritual toward the evening and a lot of people shy away from that but that is traditional it's ancestral so i'm in line with a a, a first sunday ritual or a la i'm sorry the fourth sunday i should say the first sunday of the the season and then the fourth sunday of the what we consider to be the month so it's in line with a lot of the ancestors so that's why i'm wearing the white uh, the white garb, you will hear uh, Beyonce in her visual album talk about the ancestors wearing all white. So this is what I'm I'm rocking with tonight, y'all. So, of course, I'm going to start off with ritual this evening. Uh, let me go ahead and put you guys on a, uh, let's see, let's do a little tripod here. I got to get this tripod going on so we can make sure we got some light and all that good stuff. Hold on. Let's get you in here. Hope everyone's doing well. Ashay, Ashay, once again. I want to get y'all talking about these rituals. This is going to be total ancestral today. Um, we're moving into that season. And what I'm really working on is, is sharing and teaching uh, lessons on a lot of the ancestral traditions um, so that they will be remembered. So we are going to actually light our candle. Um, we're going to light our candle. It was a nice rainy day today, y'all. It was really nice rainy, so we can get some water in here. We got our elementals represented. So we got some back-in-the-day old-fashioned just matches. This is good for ritual. I've already prepared my candle. I should call in the ancestral spirits. This is Bible Magic 8 headquarters. And, of course, we're going to... Um, Lock in on the uh, spirits of the Most High. We're locking in on the ancestral spirits. And um, we say Ashe. We welcome that energy and we humble ourselves in this in this moment so that we can receive and then also uh, give out as we have been prepared. This is a wonderful season because it is the time of uh, reaping the harvest. Um, and I saw spirit showing us the horn of plenty. A lot of us have toiled and labored throughout this uh, year uh, in what is the 2020 uh, year as it's known according to the Gregorian calendar. Uh, that's what we're following right now. And uh, we say ashe to those ancestors who started this all off for us. And as it continues, and that invisible thread that I talk about is here. So what I'd like to do is, I know I'm live, but I'm not really engaging at all with the uh, any of the chat. So as I always say, if you're chatting amongst each other, that would be perfect. And then I can come back and look at the comments later. But um, I'm going to give us some also directional energy too with our bell. So we're going to say to the north, we bring in those energies to the south, that energy as well. To the east, and then also to the west. And we are in the, what is considered the land of the setting sun, so it is the west energy. So we say our shade, and we give one more to the the etheric realm, the ancestral spirits. 
Now, this is a time when I have, um, I always have visitation, spirit visitation, but this is really big for um, some of my ancestors. I'm not going to get into their names. They know who they are. I work with them pretty well. But um, this is that time of year, and I am listening and, and reading and hearing um, from the spirit in the direction we're going in. And one of the main things that I want to speak of, and I'm going to hold this candle here for a while because I, as I'm speaking, I want to just put that energy within this. We're using fire energy. Uh, we used a lot of, of uh, water energy in the past, but now we're using more fire and air. And we know that those are opposing uh, because of, you know, how it works with air and fire, how you can have the, the wind to blow out the fire and then the fire to come and can all be all consuming where you can't even breathe well. Um, so we're in that type of uh, those opposite ends of polar. But as we are in it, we're trying to find our balance and harmony within it. So the main premise of what we're working to do at this point is to take our position as we are supposed to right now based on our destiny and purpose. So what we're really working to do is make sure that as we are living our daily lives on this side of heaven, as they say, in the physical realm, that we're listening also in the spirit realm so that we'll have strategy for the here and the now. And as we end up this season, we, uh, the, well, we ended the summer season, and then now we're going into the fall season, we want to make sure that we are have adhering to all that we're supposed to be in tune to right now. And I know it feels good to kind of like be in that ignorance is bliss position where you just don't say, you like, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear it. But if you don't, then you're uh, more subject to experiences that can be harsh. You can still learn from them, but we're going to have to get to the place where we're actually strategizing. So um, I mentioned uh, in a Sunday ceremony and service uh, here uh, live I had, a couple of weeks ago uh, that I was uh, prompted by spirit in the very beginning of this year in 2020 to do these blogs and the blogs went on for like 60 days um, and it's a total of 30 of them but it was just non-stop just waking up in the middle of the night and and always like just got these downloads from spirit so on my website at biblemagic8.com on the very front uh, page, you'll see that there is, the landing page, you'll see that there is uh, this series of, of blogs. So those are the ones like complete downloads. So as I started a, a couple of Sundays ago reading those off, I'm going to get into one of the ones that I mentioned that I was going to talk about. And then it's also part of lessons that I'm providing. So um, as I'm bringing in, ushering in spirit, believing that spirit is going to be with us so that we can hear what we need to hear. I'm going to introduce you to what spirit is allowing us to uh, understand, understand, and understand regarding our experiences right now. Now, I want to share this dream that I had uh, just today. As a matter of fact, I was up early um, just praying over my household, praying through the Bible Magic 8 headquarters, and I was um, hearing from spirit that the shift that is continuing to occur is definitely um, finding its way to a, a level playing field. And what I mean by that is that we're going to now start going into that land of plenty, that time of plenty, and we have to be prepared for it. I think so many people pray and they, they beg and they want this better, whatever you call better life, and they don't really know that maybe they're not prepared for it. So what we're doing, if we ha but the reason why we're not prepared for it is because we're do we don't have knowledge of a lot of things that we need to know uh, right now in order to go into that territory, to go into this new land, this new coast, this new frontier. So as I'm preparing this information in January to uh, February 29th, like I said, the leap year uh, date, uh, February 29th, that's where it ended. And then, of course, like I said, March, we went right into going into quarantine and having to be just kind of cut off from everyone wearing masks and so on and so forth. But as we're getting to, to the position of moving into these new territories, there's certain information that we no longer can say, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to know that. You have to know it in order to be cognizant of what you're dealing with. So as I mentioned, as I was sleeping today, I had got up early for ritual and, um, you know, in, in preparing things in my home and uh, in the headquarters. And then I come and I get into this deep sleep. And as I'm waking up from the sleep, I'm, I'm seeing this battle still going on. And what kind of battle? Uh, I don't want to put race to it, but 
I see this man, he's standing on a church. It looks like a citadel. And it was a, um, he looked like a giant, but it might be that he was just, I don't know, it was because it was a dream. It's, you know, it's kind of distorted a bit. But he was on a very tall church with a steeple and it looked like a citadel and the sun was setting in his face and it was so bright and vivid and he had on war um, uniform. I mean, the whole, you know, um, armor, you name it, the, the, the helmet. And he turns, and I'm trying to show my cousin, and she was busy and talking about something, one of, one of these particular cousins. And she's busy talking about things and then um, not paying attention. And I said, do you see him? So she never got a chance to look around, but I saw him. And as soon as I recognized him and said, do you see him? He turned and he looked me dead in my face. And then I woke up. So and I was like, okay, now what is that dream? It was so vivid. I'm like, he's on top of this thing. So you think about the fact that if he's, if he's up on top of some citadel in a big city or whatever, what was he looking in my face for? <laughs> I'm like, okay, now why are you looking at me? But then I realized that it was like this on game on type of con confrontation. So um, I'm saying all of this to say, when we think about this now, like I said, I'm not going to give it a race, this person a race or anything like that, because I know that we're dealing with deeper aspects of it. I know there's certain people that walk around in a certain skin color that's representative of these energies of old. But I know that it was like a game on experience because the sun was actually setting on him. And he looked at me like, okay, you know, now what? But it wasn't a look of like he was coming to get me or he was feeling like he was in power anymore. It was more one of those okay, what y'all going to do? Wow, this is about to end. <laughs> That's in all honesty. So long story short, you know, now that we're in this position where the, um, if you want to say that the era has passed, we're coming into another positioning, a new frontier, then there's certain things that we need to know about our past and our ancestors' past that uh, will help us as we move forward. And it also will drop off some, some weights and chains as I like to look at it and get us out of the cemetery. <laughs> I really want to put that out there and get us on about that cemetery where we have been placed for definitely hundreds of years. I want to say thousands of years, but hundreds of years within on this soil. So that with that particular dream, I'm just going to go ahead and give us another little bringing in of some spirits to kind of help with that energy. a lower tone okay I shake ancestors for bringing that so reading that uh, as we move forward and I'm going to turn on some light in just a minute because I want to actually read through some scriptures and also uh, I want to read through the one of my blogs and I'm going to take my time with these blogs because it is so much rich information that was channeled from the spirit realm from the high magic that will help us at this time. So as I always like to say, I have my dedicated scripture, which is Ephesians 6 and 12, realizing that we wrestle not against fresh flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's dealing with the mind. That's also dealing with the ether. That's dealing with the uh, etheric realm, uh, as, as a lot of people say. And, and I've been using etheric and I used it, it the other day and I saw that it was like a nether, nether. So it's a more of a, and I'm going to get more into speaking about cemeteries and, and, and um, death energy because we are coming up against that seriously. And if you uh, always give that little disclaimer, if you feel like you want to turn off right now and just kind of like tune out from me and just turn, go to another channel, then you probably want to do that. Because I'm going to get del definitely del delve really deep into the spirit realm because we have to really get ourselves to a knowledge of this and understanding the wisdom. Um, so I saw nether. And when we get into nether, we're dealing with the underworld. And what spirit want me to advise is that there is a experience now where we are going to have to shake off those energies that were given to our ancestors because they are definitely death energies. And when I get to reading this next blog, I'm going to, it's going to explain to you what we're dealing with. We were not given the benevolent energies to pray to. I'm going to repeat that. We were not given the benevolent or the, the 
want to say quote unquote life energies to pray to. We were given the death energies to pray to. And as you can see, that keeps you in a perpetual loop. And that goes back to that limniscate, which is a cycle, a, a perpetual loop of that energy that will keep you going between death, going in life, death, life, death over and over again and not even really realizing it. And what do they say? What is the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. So that will give you the bouts of insanity, the bouts of depression, the, bout, the bouts of um, feeling self-defeated, uh, also going into the position of, of self-destruction. So it's so important that we now realize this and that we not be afraid of it. It's not spooky pooky. I promise you it's not spooky pooky. Once you uncover it, I'm going to liken it to this. When you're in a position where you're afraid sometimes, or may if I, at this point when I remember being a child, I'm trying to remember a time when I used to be afraid because it's, it was, I, I had many things introduced to me by my mom about death and, and, and horror. And we watch horror flicks all the time. So I'm trying to think when I was afraid, there were some things that would get to me, but I know some people might deal with fear and you know how it is when you're feeling afraid and maybe you're in the dark and you turn on the lights and you feel better. That's what this experience is going to be like right now to realize that we were praying to a lot of death energies. Um, it, and when you think of the key of Solomon, it's called the Goetia, the Goetia energies, which is more so demonic or uh, in a minute, I'll share with you what it, what it is in the tra traditional ancestral energy, what they say that a death energy is. So we're going to get into heavy off into that in this particular uh, session. So with it being considered Sunday, Sunday is a day that is traditional for our ancestors to pray. And I want to be on this day with this type of energy so that I can have that protection around me when it comes to the, uh, the spirits of, of thereof and those who are amongst us to help us. But um, this particular energy of that particular, that, uh, I want to say entity that looked at me like, okay, now I know y'all about to come into power. Now what? You know, it was one of those positions Realizing that that particular spirit is something that we can actually put ourselves in a position of defeating and overcoming if we know the whole game. It's nothing like going into a game and not knowing the rules. We've been in that position for quite some time where we don't get the rules of the game. If you don't get the rules of the game, you will be playing the game, but you won't, you'll be more in happenstance. Maybe I'll make it sometime and maybe I won't make it. And then you might see what's going on and say, oh, they throwing the ball over here or they actually um, pushing the puck down there. So, oh, that's what you do. And you start trying to go along and try to play this game, but you didn't really get the rules in the beginning. You didn't know the rules and you just kind of go and just kind of like hope for the Hail Mary to come and then you'll make it. <laughs> Hail Mary where you just throw a ball and next thing you know you got a point. But that's a, that's that's a, that's of the ages of old in many ways. Although a lot of our ancestors, their spirit was uh, and their magic, if I want to put it that way, was on point. But they still were just kind of winging it because they didn't have all the rules to the game. And it's just like an adversary or an enemy to do that many times. It's just to start you in a quote unquote race and not give you all the rules of the game. So they what they're banking on is that you will not know what to do, and then they can just kind of have the heads up on you. So with that, uh, with that being said, moving into this information so that we will not go blindly into this next leg of our journeys and we'll know what's what. If you're here, if you so, whosoever will, please come and hear what it is I want to share with you. So Ashe, we're going to go into uh, kind of explaining some of this, this one particular blog and I'm going to turn some light on so we can do that. Just want to set the tone for our, um, going to keep our candle lit and we're gonna uh, get into this lesson that light's not too dark we're gonna go for it again I hope you guys are all right doing all right out there let me go ahead and put some glasses on I don't have my contacts in so I'm working with so my glasses that help me to see fine and actually oh god that's a little I don't want to be spooky in here talking about this y'all <laughs> and I keep saying I keep repeating the spooky aspect because many people think this is scary but it's not scary okay so I actually don't need my reading glasses believe it or not let's see if it's be too bright 
Is that too bright? Let me see. Either way, as long as you can see me, that's all that matters. Okay, so let's get into some information. Again, what I'm sharing with you is so that we can be in the know, so we'll know what this game is uh, about, right? So when we're dealing with these spirit realms, because we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. We do, but we don't. We're, I'm talking about when you want to try to win the complete battle, when you want to win the game. You, you actually going with spiritual wickedness in high places, and you're talking about the the um, the cavity within your mind, the, the the mind ground, and then also the ground of the high magic. So this particular blog is on my website, BibleMagic8.com, and I'm going to actually preface this with saying that if you watch the, um, and I always bring this up. Um, because it's it's really symbolic and it's visual. The visual album of Beyonce, when she gets into the Orisha, that's what a lot of this has to do with. So I'm looking at my blog right now, and I'm going to share this. And again, so it's so to make sure that you are in the know for this era and in this season. And as we're going into the time of when a lot of people are doing ritual against a certain group of people <laughs> that you will be able to be in the know and you're no longer closing your eyes off. I always think about those little monkeys, the one that's the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And there's a fourth one, which is and a lot of people. It is, I think that people lost the meaning of it. So they, they don't show it often, but there's one that's sitting on its hands and that means do no evil. So we're in this position where these little monkeys and um, not that we're monkeys, but I'm just saying that's usually how it's depicted. <laughs> uh, let me clear that up. But uh, what's happening is that they don't want to see no evil. They don't want to hear no evil. They don't want to speak no evil. And they don't want to do no evil. So that's kind of where that comes from. So um, here we are. Let's get into the BibleMagicAid.com. If you go into my blogs, this one is called Ancestor Wisdom Repackaged. How? Okay, so it's a question, and it was on January 25th. It's in uh, Spirit Rise, R-I-S-E is an acronym, Connection. That's the name of this particular blog. And you'll see the very beginning of it. And if I'm going to turn it around, see if you can see this, so you can know what it is. I'm going to put a, a, a actual link, but that's what it's going to look like. I got the ancient scripture there, a little bit of flash of light as well. Hopefully you see that. And um, later on, I'm going to do the whole electronic thing and have it available. But here we go. It was January 25th, 2020 that I actually did this download from Spirit. And I'm going to read it a bit and then I'm going to get into just explaining it. Kind of like teaching from days of old. That's why I had to go into the ancestral garb. And this is actually, before I get into it, let me just say this. This is actually would be representative of what an, uh, one of our ancestors or the mothers will wear. And um, as I was going into about the Beyonce visual album, she does release a lot of information about the Orisha. She also talks a lot about ancestral ritual. So one of them is that we will wear all white. Now, the particular song that, um, that I think is so uh, genius is um, Black Parade, which was actually written and, and released on uh, Juneteenth. And the reason why it was so important it was to put out that song at that time is because of the ancestors being amongst us. And actually in the background, if you can think of some of those sci-fi uh, movies and, and actual uh, animated depictions of a of a realm where someone's helping from a different uh, that's amongst us from a different world, so to speak. So that's literally literally how we can look at the ancestors right now if we tap into the energy. But if we don't believe in them and we don't believe that these certain things that was actually traditional for us, then we we can miss out on some things in many ways. If it's meant for you. Now, not everybody, you know, it's almost like a chess game. Not everybody is supposed to be those ones who tap into that. But the ones who are supposed to, you know who you are. Then if you just like, la, 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 you don't want to hear it, then, you know, you can miss some things. But you know what? It's still going to be okay. It's still going to be okay. Because everyone who's supposed to do is going to be in the right positions. So with that being said, let me turn this light down some because it's a little bright to me. I said I don't want to look spooky, but I also don't want to be blinded. Okay, so, <laughs> so here we go. Uh, January 25th. Just kind of preface that, uh, which I feel kind of good being in garb. Um, January 25th, uh, to, be, to define repackage, we, we can say to present in a new way. Okay, so this whole aspect of ancestors' wisdom repackaged. Okay, so to present it in a new way or to present in a more perceived, attractive manner. 
Okay, so it's perceived as attractive, but it's more so to give it some kind of watered down aspect so that it sounds a little better, looks a little better, feels a little better, and then it's even changed from what it was originally meant to be so that you can kind of like snuff out the ones who probably put it together. Um, so case in point, history has reported that the King James Version, KJB of the Bible, had uh, approximately 18 different religious manuscripts that contributed to its content. Yet some of us learned early on that the Bible uh, is the unadulterated word of God. But we define unadulterated in part as unmixed or pure in this case. So now when we say unmixed or pure, uh, we can look at it as the traditional definition but when we talk about the canonical uh, type of scriptures, those are the ones that was acceptable by the religious order and the law at that time. So even if they had taken that from the ancestors, let's say it that way, uh, which not many different, I want to say, uh, ethnicities and certain people's ancestors had information, and I'm not trying to say they didn't, but I'm just saying I'm talking about my bloodline. Because that's the point of reference that I have. So I can't speak for everyone. And I'm not planning on speaking for everyone right now. I'm talking about my bloodline. And the ones that, that got my spirit guys that are above me. And that help me in the spirit realm. That, that like I said in animation. That world that's amongst us. That's who I'm referring to. Now everyone else if you want to do your research on your ancestors. And give this information to history. Then you know I love that kind of stuff. By all means I love to hear. But I'm talking about my ancestors. Okay so. With the ancestors that these 18 different manuscripts, uh, this, a lot of this information was taken from, that would be the pure form of it. But this particular re repackaged version is going to be something that's more acceptable so that many people can kind of, I don't know, fit themselves into it, if you can put it that way. So, yet some of us learned er early on that the Bible, being the unadulterated word of God, as they say, that was something that was a little skewed, okay? So, my take on it is that the King's Version is far from pure, as I'm kind of mentioning here. Having 18 different contributing religious manuscripts, how can it be pure? Uh, we have to look at where do we find the origin of every story in the Bible. Okay, so that's where we're going to get into it. Now, I know that many folks have attempted to present an argument of what they believe to be the truth about characters within the Bible. They, they say, oh, well, this is real. And some people feel that it's real. But I'm here to take the wool, so you can go ahead and take, you got your, I know you got your eyes covered up, your ears, your mouth. Some people in there, they're sitting on their hands, but this is what we're really dealing with. You got to know this if you're moving into this next realm and get to your next level, okay? Um, I've researched it. There seems to be some holes in some of the historical uh, conjecture surrounding the famous and or infamous persona within the Bible, the personas. In other words, they ju they're just guessing. <laughs> y'all they're guessing uh the main purpose of my post that was my post but i'm reading to you uh is to present my take on the origins and uh, and one particular story that many uh, a bible scholar independent or not knows all too well the story about the biblical personas of adam and eve okay so this is going to be a, a part of my lesson that's going forward in, in bible magic mystery school uh the group as well as Bible Magic 8 E Academy of uh, Metaphysics. So it's Bible Magic 8 Mystery School, and uh, then there's Bible Magic 8 E Academy of Metaphysics. Now, I'm actually going into that lesson, the very first le lesson of the fall season. Now, when you get it, and it's all getting into the book of Genesis, and also tying it into the Tarot, which is really uh, a great place to start, because as I always mention, the Tarot, is a, are the, uh, that's basically the storyboard picture card of the written word of the King James Bible. Um, for one particular deck. And I've been saying that, but uh, there's one thing I'd like to say is that there are many decks out there, but the one that ties into the King James Bible is the deck that is called the A.E. Rider Weight deck. And that particular deck is, um, well, I like to say A.E. Rider Weight Smith, uh, because Smith is the, um, she's the one who actually did the illustration. So I like to put her fair due in there as well. Um, so the A.E. Rider Waite Smith, which just stands for Arthur Edward. So the A.E. stands for Arthur Edward uh, Rider Waite, and then Smith is from the illustrator. That particular de uh, deck has, uh, they were in the secret order called the Golden Dawn. 
and a lot of these things I say, I want you to research and look it up for yourself, but the golden dawn y'all, and they are the ones that tie it directly into the King James version of the Bible. So that's where you get this symbolism from, for that one particular deck. Now, when you get out there and a lot of tarot readers like myself, we know that there are many different decks. The only way that you know that it's an actual tarot deck or a Trump deck uh, is that it has to have 78 cards in it, according to what we know now. Uh, anything that's more or less is considered an oracle deck. And there's a many, there's a many oracle decks out there, too. But when you talk about tarot, it's 78 cards, and it's representative of the major arcana and then the minor arcana. And this is not a tarot lesson, but I just want to make sure that I'm making a distinction about which particular deck I'm referring to. Um, now, we get into this particular, these lessons, which we use the A.E. Rider deck as well as the tarot de Marseille and um, Marche as well. So it gets into um, the Creole language, the Louisiana Creole, when we say Marche. Marche means to walk, and the tarot is a tear road, tears. And in Matthew 13, we talk about the tears. That's a whole other lesson, uh, or it might be tares, um, but it's a weed. So it's a weedy walk, <laughs> if you can put it that way, which is a cycle that I mentioned between life and death. So we've been in this position where we've been between this life and death experience, both in a physical realm as well as a spiritual realm, because we've been given the wrong deity to look to as our helpers, right? We've been giving the actual deities that's really about death, and I'll get into that in just a moment. So just setting the tone for that. So we're getting into this next lesson about Adam and Eve, and it's within the book of Genesis, for those who don't know it. So G-E-N-E-S-I-S. That's the spelling pronunciation. Genesis is what they're using. Um, so go directly to my point so that we are uh, not lost in many, many words. Please pay special attention to the name Eve so that we can circle back to its spelling in just a bit. So Eve, right? E-V-E. -E. Uh, the very first book of the Bible, as we know it, has been repackaged and retold for hundreds of years, starting in A.D., Anodonomy. Uh, that means the year of our Lord or the, uh, and some of us say after death, um, the birth of Christ. And there's an after death, uh, and that was in 1611 when it was first authorized and published by King James Stewart, the first of England and the sixth of Scotland. So he held those two positions. Thus, the reason it was labeled as the King James Version, the King's Version. So we all know that a version is just my version of the story. Well, what's your version of the story? How do you see it? So that's what we were dealing with, his version of the story. Um, so now repackaged to look better to the writers of religious history at, at this time. Okay, so it's repackaged. It just wanted to look a little better for them because they were using another group of people's information, another uh, region of the world. Um, that's for another day. But they were using this, and, and I mentioned this before, for the purpose so that if you wanted to get a certain people to follow you anywhere, you're going to use something that's familiar to them. You want to use some information that will help them to feel like, oh, I know this. I know these names. I know this story. I feel this. This feels familiar. Oh, where are we going? I'll tell you some things what we're going to do. And when we go to this land, it's going to be whatever. And then you're kind of trapped into it. So, and that's just a take on it again. I'm just kind of ad-libbing some things because, you know, the history of what thereof is more so, oh, well, they sold their people and they and so on and so forth. And they were warring. And, you know, I'm not saying that's not true. But um, for the most part, you know, you didn't have to take us. So that's a whole other thing. So let's shift it a bit. The great reveal. Now, this is the reveal. This is the stuff that you will no longer say, la, la, la. I don't want to hear it. Uh, the great reveal will take place at this time within this post. Okay, so I'm going to reveal some things. Um, to you that will help with our next leg of the journey uh, for those who are will whosoever will whosoever will let them come let them come all right gave y'all this song before this is this is representative of, of how we would actually have our what we call missionary meetings where they would wear all white and we would sing those ne what's called Negro spirituals of gospel today that was soul stirring and transcendently spiritual. This is what this lineage is. This is what this is all about. It's actually carrying it forward. So here's the reveal. I must, must first advise that we will change the way, it will change the way in which we frame ourselves going forward. Okay, this is a preparation. We are wholeheartedly walking in the essence of our true being. 
We will no longer take on the role that was given to us by men, especially foreign men. We are the word made flesh, the living word. We know who we are and whose we are. Okay. So this is actually a charge, a spiritual charge. Whether I mention this in, in my different, um, what I want to say, uh, titles. <laughs> One thing I am is a, is a, a charge agent helping people to find their actual place. So we are a people who we should know who we are and whose we are. There will be a complete shift moving forward on this platform. So I was actually in the position of coming to the knowledge of this. Okay? Coming to the knowledge. I like when this happens because it's always representative of well, we, we need to use everything around us as spiritual promptings you hear this right now it was really quiet and now we got some information to give this is perfect timing perfect time let me see what my time is yeah we still going we still got a red button let it happen right next to this forest right where i heard the owl go hoo, 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 hoo. this is perfect i'm gonna let it go forward because this is some good information i have another video uh where um it's actually from anima scripture and it's uh, Taffy, our our uh, professor. <laughs> she's one of the, she's the dean, the head dean of Bible Magic 8 Mystery School. She has this alarm that goes off about us, actually, um, our spiritual legacy is being compromised and it's, it's in danger. So she has this alarm that go off and that's what this is like. So I want people to hear, whosoever will, let them come. Because we're going to use this energy right now. Let's get into it right now. Let's listen. This is real. This is real. If you learn to use everything that happens around you and realize that it's all connected, then you will just be so out of your quagmire with just like life itself. Always stop. Always listen. Always get in tune. Stay in tune with the spirit. This is a great, this is wonderful timing because what I'm going to share is really powerful. Let's get our candle. Again, it's a moment of silence. This is a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday service, our new service, our new direction. the energies thereof that will help us and guide us into this new frontier we're pioneering many of us are pioneers once again we bring many traditions forward but then at the same time we also recognize and reverence the ones that are would that are here now and the ones that are in the future ashe ashe spirit we tapping into that i love it all right, I'm even going to turn this light down a bit because when I read this, I want this to be very much a part of our next shift here. Okay. So, we know who we are and whose we are. We know who we are and whose we are. It's important that you continue to say that mantra to yourself constantly. I know who I am and whose I am. I know who I am and whose I am. And you put yourself into a headspace that this is a way to help you to get to your next level as you're pioneering. Those who are supposed to hear this, they get it. Okay, there's no more explanation anymore. We're out of the elementary phase. We did the, the kindergarten. We did, well, the preschool. We did the kindergarten. We did the, the grammar school. And we did the um, middle school. Now we're moving on. We did the high school even. We did the undergrad. We're going to grad. We're going all the way to graduate school. We're coming on to this next level. So you need a lot more fine tuning and, and realization. So you got to continue. Now, there's so many people. Now, you we have this shift going on now because we had, in March, we had a quarantine. Everything was new to us. We were in masks for months, went through the summer. Now, we're, there should be some shifts. Some people ought to be coming into fine-tuning themselves and realizing that, okay, you know, I did all this praying all these years, and, you know, now we're in this position, and it seems like 
uh, I can't get a foot, you know, any type of hold on anything. You're at your wit's end, but there's no need to be at your wit's end because this next information will free you if you let it free you. If you realize what you were praying to, and now you can shake, shake it off. Shake it, shake it off and go to the next position. It's possible. So I must first advise that we will change, this will change the way in which we frame ourselves going forward. We are wholeheartedly walking in the essence of true being. Who uh, We will no longer take on the role that was given to us by men, especially foreign men. We are the word made flesh, the living word. We know who we are and whose we are. There will be a complete shift moving forward on this platform. We answer to the naming and call of earth angels, both low and high. Okay. One, you'll come to understand that by and by, the earth angels. Okay, We operate within the multiverse in the year 2020 with the presence of all uh, levels of existence. Okay, It's on all levels of existence. If you're ready to resonate with me on that frequency, let's do this because we got this. We go between the worlds of the visible and invisible. We live as the metaphysics. Of them all walking in the great I am okay so earth angels that's that's the ones who are here who are in this at this time to make a change who are able to change you may feel like you're at your wits ends but you're not you can move forward all you have to do is just believe and move forward so what do we really find behind the curtain or cloak of this ancestral story retold within the King James Version of the Bible that's what the earth angels are asking. And as I'm saying, the maven, it is considered voodoo. Yes, it's voodoo. Now we see that it, now that's a big, that's a big jump. I know. But we see it spelled V-O-O-D-O-O -O -O as it made it to New Orleans. That was the gateway for the ancestors because it is a port. Many, many, many enslaved Africans came through that port. Uh, both the enslaved for labor for labor of the hand, and then also both the enslaved for labor of the uh, sexual kind, um, both women, men, and children. They don't talk about that a lot now, but it was also sexual slavery that was going on. When you look at the French quarters, even the way they practiced Mardi Gras there, um, that is what it was, the purpose of it. So we're going to be revealing a lot more about that, right? So when you look about when you think about that gateway, the New Orleans gateway, there was also a slavery of religion or spirituality. So you could believe the way you want to believe, and it had to be repackaged so that you can now believe it the way they want you to believe, and then also be erased, a lot of memory be erased of your traditional power. Okay, so I am a daughter of the voodoo ordained by my bloodline, elder mothers, Ada, Lilian, Bessie Ann, and myself, Jerina Ann plus the ones before them and the ones that are to come. So I actually come into that energy right now, as I'm saying the ancestor's name. And then I want you all to replace the name that I use for my ancestors with your own ancestors, those who know who you are. Just praying to the directionals, north, south, east, and west. Bringing in those energies to help us in this season so they can be behind the scenes helping us. Say your ancestor's name. I present to you what has been safely kept underground for centuries so that my people would continue to live, survive, and thrive. Okay, so this is something that originally came from the motherland, if you want to put it that way. Went throughout the diaspora as the transatlantic slave trade uh, of enslaved ancestors and the triangular trade was occurring uh, in the trade winds. It actually went throughout that and now it's here. And now we're moving forward with that invisible thread. Now, the ancestors have requested that this information be released from its time capsule. So this was all bottled up. And as I mentioned, we were given the, uh, the, the death energies to pray to as our living energies, but we were confused on it because the information was erased. So now we can get to move into more of the actual information. So we, I'm going to open a time capsule right now in the spirit realm. We are some of the ones known as the keepers of voodoo. So my bloodline is known as the keepers of voodoo. It, you don't see a lot on it because it's actually a lot of oral tradition and just spiritually handed down. Um, now we called it the 
Pentecostal, Pente, we're going to get into what Pentecostal or Pente means, charismatic, holy roll, rollers, crazy or cray cray, sanctified folks or Bible thumpers. So when you see these people and you see them uh, eyes rolling in the back of their head and speaking in an unknown tongue, that's actually part of voodoo. Now this special attention to the name of Eve, who in the Bible wrote, uh, was wrote as the mother of all living in the following verses. Let's read it here. So Genesis 3, 30, uh, 22 to 23, I have a link there. And Adam called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of all living unto Adam also and to his wife. Did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them? And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know God, uh, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take all of the tree, also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So, I'll show you on those scriptures. That's from the King James Version of the Bible. So what you're hearing here is that there was a shifting from the God energy into a flesh coat, right? And when it talks about flesh coat, that means that what was it before? It was a spirit. It was actually a spiritual energy. So we're talking about a releasing into this energy of the land, and we'll get into that another time. So the mother of all living is Eve. This will be the mother, as in the creatress or co-creator in this case. So we are looking at the truth to so-called beguiled serpent, who we were told. Now, this is the truth, right? This is the actual information. Now, we've seen it and was told in one way, but let's look at the truth of it. So there's a link here. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God's known, known good and evil. So let's replace good and evil with life and death. So they use the good and evil because they want to change it and shift it. But we've seen it in the ancestors as always of life and death. Okay, so then we get into, and I'm going to show you this. That's a picture of what considered Mami Wata. But what they're referring to, voodoo, is actually referring to these energies of the ancestors. This is a story that was told by them, but it was repackaged and retold. She was known as Mami Wata in the uh, Americas as well as Africa and throughout the Caribbean Isles. Um, or Oshun Ibukule, also, and that's or it's Oshun or Oshun Ibukule. So there's a different different levels of the spirits as I as I mentioned the deities. Um, or Eda Wedo or Dambala Wedo. So that's something you don't hear because it goes back into the traditions of Voodoo. Um, a lot of what we're learning is Orisha uh, when they will say something like uh, Obatala and um, those type of energies. We're going to actually go into the law, the loa, as the scriptures call them, the Eloa or the Elohim, right? So we're going to actually change that up. This is the information that we're learning moving forward. Um, so the serpent or snake is the energy that resides within Eve as the great mother. The serpent bearer is also known as Ophiuchus to some. Now we see it as a man, he's naked in the sky with a snake, but that is the energy. That's the 13th zodiacal sign that is not really mentioned. They only mention 12. But the Eve energy or that serpent bearer is actually what we learn about in Genesis with the serpent. Okay, so that's something that the ancestors have been telling for thousands of years. So it was repackaged 400 years ago to get certain people to come to this country and then spark the economy of the world. So it was familiar to them. So they followed it, but then they ended up being here on this soil, you know, to their detriment in many ways, but not to the detriment of the greater whole. And I know people might beg to differ with me on that, but we'll, we'll get, we'll come to understand it by and by as the ancestors used to say. So some who see this heavenly body, the man straddles the serpent. We're talking more so about the serpent of the great mother. This is thousands of years old. And my ancestors call her name Oshun. Think about ocean. That's one way to look at it. Ibukule or Mami Wata. Okay. We're going to go back to the spellings of, of the use of Eda Wedo and Dambala Wedo. Okay. And the rainbow serpent. So I won't continue to read this full because I'm running out of the, um, to the message that I want to give here. But I want to introduce this at this time only because we're going to continue our lessons with this. But I am going to skip down and I'm going to talk about the ancestors believe in the embodiment of spirit with the fleshly within the fleshly temple. So you hear a lot of flesh, you hear a lot of spirit within these scriptures, but it's referring to the embodiment and what we call 
the mounting and the housing of spirit. So when you see people and you see them at the time and you were afraid of them and their eyes rolling in the back of their head, they were embodying spirit. And that's what a lot of the sanctified folks held on to that particular tradition. Now, it was underground, as they said, but what we were doing was praying to the, it was a, a tainting of the tradition. But we were praying to Goetia or the spirits that were not the benevolent spirits. So I'm going to skip down a bit and I'm going to talk about that because I want to get into it. So the presence of the voodoo is evident in the Hebrew terms Elohim and Eloah. They provide underlying evidence of the male and female essence of God within the Bible. Although we just say that since they were trying to change it to a patriarchal society, they just talk more so about the Elohim. But the Eloah is more so the spiritual side of the female aspect as well. So, oh, you, and you will hear that in Hawaii where they say aloha, aloha, right? And then you see the women with the lays, they call them lays on their necks. So the word lay is used in many ways. So it's a, a, a circle around the neck with flowers. We're going to get into the flower of um, the seed of life and the flower of life. All these are symbol, symbolic of male, female energy. Not different times. So we'll get into that though. But within these scriptures, you will know that they we're talking about a spiritual energy of the male and female. And <coughs> we're talking about the chakra as well. That serpent energy that they talk about that kind of comes out in your third eye up here, which is the eye of the serpent. It's more of a cyclops because it's an all-seeing eye, so it only needs to be one. So when we talk about the voodoo, we're coming back into New Orleans or Louisiana Creole. And it's considered, they consider God the supreme deity to be bon je. It's pronounced bon je or good God. So bon meaning good, je is a God energy. That's the supreme deity in voodoo. Voodoo spelled V-O-U-D-O-U, which just means, it's French, it just means spirit. Uh, French Creole, uh, which is actually Louisiana Creole. The name is Creole or Haitian as well. Haiti, uh, et le bon jou, le bon du. Le bon Dieu, you'll see it in different regions, spelled different ways, and it's pronounced different ways. It's the supreme deity in voodoo. The name is Louisiana Creole for la bonne, a uh, good. And what we say is that God is a good God. It gets into one of our ancestral songs. It goes, God is a good God. Yes, he is. God is a good God. Yes, he is. So that's an old song that my grandmother used to even sing. So we kind of get into that. So many writers have... Uh, commented on how bon jay and bon jay is remote or impersonal, not your truly yours. So that's a higher deity that set everything in motion and then put these other spirits in charge of it. This is just actually tradition. So I'm just pronounce I'm just actually giving you information on I'm just kind of like pronouncing this right now. Like this is what we believe in. This is what was that was the ancestors did. Okay. So I'm pronouncing the words according to how it was said and how regions of the world is, but you might hear it differently. It depends on where you're from, what region of the world you're from, and where your family uh, resides from, even within this on this land. So if you reach research Dambala Wedo and Eda Wedo, you'll realize that the energy that they speak of in the Genesis is those creator energies. Those are the ones that are actually above all as the traditions go. So when we talk about I want to get into the Trinity now. So this is when I ended on this, right? So the Trinity, a Trinity, of course, being three, is the way that the gods are presented within like the God, the Son, God, the Father, and then God, the higher energy, this this energy of Eda Wedo or Dambala. Some say it on uh, Odamare or um, Oshun, those type of energies. Even Isis in back in the, uh, like going all the way back to ancient Egypt or Kemet. Right. So these particular trinity, the reason why I say that we've been given the, the, the death energies to deal with is because there is a way that we've been calling on certain names. And when you say it in certain ways that you're actually praying to the energies thereof that are actually from a death energy. So now let's get into in the practice of voodoo, V-O-U-D-O-U. -O -U, um, there are it's, it's beginning in the voodoo began in uh, Benin or West Africa. That's where it's said to have been, uh, began Dehomey as well. There are three levels of supernatural beings. So we're dealing with supernatural beings. And you'll see that theme throughout the King James Version of the Bible, even though it's been retold and re repackaged. So we got into the three energies. So now we go to our next level, where we're going to be learning from now on. And this is where Bible Magic 8 is taking this shift. 
the Radha, the Petra, and the Gedes. Okay, so the pantheon of Loas or Loas uh, is pronounced either Lua or Lua. Okay, Lua or Lua. So L W A is Lua, and L O A S are L O A or Loas. Okay, it can be grouped in the three main categories. The Radha is a messenger. They're benevolent spirits between the worlds. Okay, so let's see, you think about some of your Gabriel. That's more current, and as we're learning the, the deities within uh, the Orisha or the uh, Elohims, Eloas. The Petra, or the fiery, maleficent. Now, those are the maleficent spirits between the worlds. So they said to be, to kind of be in that limbo. And I want to mention this because of those who are of certain age will, will remember there was a special game that were played in the islands called the Belimbo, or Limbo, it might be called Belimbo. Um, where it was a stick that was held. And this particular stick where you would actually take your time and go under it. And the game was played such that you go lower and lower and lower and lower, and then after a while you can't get through it. So what it was representative was is the gateway, a gate. You hear about the pearly gates. So each tradition has its own way of explaining this whole gate aspect of going between death and life. So in the in the islands when you play bulimbo, it's like limbo, limbo. Everybody do the bulimbo. You might have heard that years ago. So that's what this is representative of. It was a way for the ancestors to kind of reverence. And also, uh, they told a lot of stories. A lot of this is oral tradition where they would just remember by playing certain games. So that was one aspect of it. So this Petra energy is a fiery energy. It's in the middle. It's, they're upset. They're angry because they're kind of left within this, this, this um, what they call the limbo. Um, and they not, have not, they're going between, they're between death and life. So that's the energy that they're of. So that's where I'm referring to what we're believing in, a lot of us. And the Gede, the bridge spirits, okay, between the worlds of the living and the dead. So you have the Gede, the Petra. So, so what you when you see Radha and Petra, you're dealing with more so what the King James Bible calls angels and demons, right? So the ancestors believed in this, okay? So that would be easy for them to kind of transition into this particular religion, whether we believe it or not, because a lot of the information although there were different names, was similar to the way that it was explained in voodoo, okay? Originally in voodoo. So that's what this lot, uh, 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 is about. So the Gede, the bridge spirits between the worlds of the living and the dead, is what we were really given to worship, okay? That's why I say we'll get into the Keys of Solomon, uh, when we get into the uh, Goetia. Um, and you, it's very similar to Gede, Goe, Good, Good. You, if you look at the spelling of things and the pronunciation, you'll say, oh, that can be similar. Okay, so if you hear someone say Goe, especially if you say it fast, Gede, are they saying Gede, Gede, Gede? What are they saying? So that, that's where you really get. So if you are in these positions where you realize that we're actually been praying to the Gede or the bridge spirits, right, then you will understand, oh, this has been going on for centuries in this case. Okay, so. I'm going to actually leave this off here because um, we'll get into a little bit more later on. But uh, what I'd like to explain about the Radha uh, in religionist angels, as I mentioned in the organized religion, I'm just going to go into what they mean. Just some names. And this is for your research. Okay, so this is the direction we're going in as we're moving from the belief in just a um, the fairy tales of what is considered the King James Bible. So the Radha or they're in religion, it's called angels. That's the uh, Afro-Haitian, Haitian terms as Loa, as I mentioned, Loa, spirits, uh, mystery or mystery. Uh, invis it's called invisible, if you want to put it, invisible. Uh, it means invisible, okay? And the, uh, the Zang is the angels, okay? You might also hear Wanga, which is Wanga is hex. So, um... In Afro Creole or Southern United States of America, they say a spirit or spirit, spirit, uh, mystery, uh, mystery as well. It's the uh, mystery or invisible, invisible, which is similar to invisible, right? So the Haitian Creole and then of course the Louisiana Creole have different uh, dialects, so it kind of you know gets a little bit. They they kind of sound similar, but they're different. Then we get into the Petra. Now, this is what I believe we've been playing with. Like, these are the devil spirits that, that you don't want to mess with them. But if you've been praying for them to them for years, as we have in this country, centuries, you can see where you continue that cycle, that figure eight, that infinity of just going into death energy constantly. And you find trying to figure out, and, and this is something that, that needs to be taken care of on a daily basis. 
a minute basis, a second basis that you're always watching and praying. That's why you hear those scriptures and those who get it, men are, 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 are always to pray and not faint and women. Right, because you all these things are always at you. Your enemy is always going to be trying to take you out. So you are not to make anyone afraid, but always just to be cognizant. So, so we can't get into a cocky spirit. Well, I got this, right? So these are the things that we've been praying to. So the Petra in religion, these are called the demons or devils. Okay, so it's called Petra, Petro, or Petro. Okay, when we think about Petro, what are you hearing in that? You're hearing petroleum. You think about petroleum, that's a fire, that's a fire accelerant. So you're thinking of a hot or, or a shoal in Louisiana Creole is called shoal. Um, it's hot, a hot energy. It's a it's a like you think of Hades or Shoal, uh Shoal it might be called. That's a hot energy. Now in Afro Creole, southern United States of America, it's called uh Jabon, right? Or Mauvais Viva Spirit. Zed spirit or zombie, okay. So that's what that is. That's really that middle energy, the petrol, the the, the demon energy. The gede represents a bridge to and from the underworld. Just to give that, and, and then it will. Um, and we will just be. We'll discuss this later. But uh, many bloodline voodoo practitioners are holding on to this great reveal for now. So that a lot of us aren't even really getting into the gede of what that particular, what's represented because it's represented. It's a big representation within the King James Bible. And right now it's going to be revealed, but we're holding on to it for just a little bit more. There's a reason why this information can't be released right now, but just know that there is a, a, um, get dead energy that is not going to be revealed, but it's, it's coming. Okay. So, um, so wrapping this up and we'll continue this. This was just for this day of, of releasing. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up. This is where we're going, the direction we're going in. Let this up just a little bit more. There we go. So, uh, wow. That was a lot. I'm recenter myself. So this is a situation where, where we go from here. As you continue to tune in to Bible Magic 8, uh, either through the Bible Magic 8 TV, Bible Magic 8 uh, uh, by a Mystery School, or the Bible Magic 8 E Academy Metaphysics. Either way, you're going to be able to go down this particular path moving forward. I had to get that out. <laughs> I'm releasing a little bit now. Get my candle back out. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and close it out and let everyone kind of be with that energy. I share to the ancestors all the benevolent spirits and I, I send that out to you all as well be with your ancestors um, be with the spirit guys and of course the most high creator of all things um, and realize that this is not to be a spooky pooky experience it's more so meant so that we can be in the know and know what we're working with we'll know the rules of the game and how we move forward through this particular season. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we went through the quarantine. We went through wearing the mask. We're still here. Um, however, now we have to graduate and we have to, many of us might feel like we've already graduated. Who knows on a spiritual sense. Um, but we got to realize what we're definitely working with and then be able to, um, win <laughs> that's what the whole purpose is have a winning mentality that i am here to win not just to make it and i kind of talked about that right playing offense or defense but we're here to win you moving through this to actually win so i just really thank the ancestors i thank that uh, my foremothers as well as my forefathers i talk about the mothers more so because those are the ones that i was actually with constantly learning with them but of course the fathers were always there in the background in many cases or father figures. And um, those energies I say all shade too as well. All the ancestors who helped to bring things together, whether you could see whatever whatever position you held, we thank that energy. And I want you all to do that as well. Pray for your ancestors. And then um, also what Beyonce talks about in Black Parade is ancestors on the wall, let the voice of uh, the, the ghost chit chat. 
So I'm going to explain that a little bit more. Um, the aspect of ancestral energy and a lot of our ancestors, they use this to help them to win these, what can be seen as battles. Um, having that particular backing, if you want to put it that way, it's like having a good team. Like I, I came from the Chicago area and those who are from Chicago and we know when it was time for Michael Jordan them, and Scottie Pippen and all those guys to play, it was amazing. Watching them play was amazing. And then they went on to play in the Olympics, okay, because they were just that good. So when you think about your ancestors, the one who came before you, the ones who want to see you win, the ones who are, are at the highest height of their uh, skill levels, those are the ones you want on your team. So that's how you see the ancestors. So if we're in this battle and we got this, this particular energy that is a warring energy standing on the citadel, looking at us straight in the eye, straight in the eye you want to have the ancestors behind you, the ones who love you. I heard Maya Angelou say this uh, before. I pray to my ancestors and I, everyone who loved me and I take them where I go. That was a sign to me at that time to say, you know what? I want to take the ancestors who have always loved me and will continue to love me. Now, there's some ancestors that might be on that petrol level. They might be on that get that bridge level. You know, everybody, everything has its position. I'm not going to tell you which ones to pray to. However, you know, you want to make sure that this ones that love you and got your best interest in mind. And most of all, for the greater good, because we want to step outside of that sometime and let the let things be as they be, as I like to say. Case of rise to rock. However, get your ancestors on your wall. Let the ghosts chit chat so they can strategize for you, so they can help you get through the things that you need to get through right now to get you on your next level. So this is what we're going to do. Let the ghosts get chit chat. Pray and let the ancestors do what they do in the background because those energies, trust me, that particular uh, giant I saw, this is some old energy that we've been dealing with for thousands of years. Some old energy. So we um got a little call coming. Let me take that off. I should put on airplane mode. But uh, but yeah. So but that's let me know to wrap it up. However, the old energy that we're dealing with, we're gonna make sure that we are equipped. We're gonna be like the dream team as they called it. Back when it was the, 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 the we was at the three peat. I remember when it was at the three peat in Chicago, and then it went to the sixth time they won. Okay, how is that possible? Well, it's because they were actually at the highest pinnacle of a game, and that's what we need to be right now. Because it's not going to end. It's not going to stop. You can't just say, okay, oh, then your enemy not going to say, oh, you know what? That's okay. Y'all been fighting all this long time. Well, I'm I'm done. Okay, let's just call the truth. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I know we wanted to. It sound good too. Like, woof, it just let me alone. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm weary. No, it's not going to happen like that. So you just go ahead, go into the bunker, go into the little foxhole, whatever you want to call it, and just say, you know, regroup, and we're going to strategize and move forward. All right, this is Bible Magic Maven, The Maven, JL Song. Uh, this is Bible Magic 8 TV, as well as just Bible Magic 8, the forum, the e, e Academy of Metaphysics, as well as the Mystery School. And we bid you the rest of the evening in a blessed evening. Thank you so much for coming into Ritual as we shift and we move into this new era and we realize what we're dealing with. And now we're going to strategize and going to make it happen. <laughs> All right. Take care now. Make sure you leave your comments and also uh, make sure that you follow and like. And then also um, know that we're going to be changing our platform some. So that's coming up too. All right. All the best. Ashe. Ashe.